Hey everybody, Mike Naso here from IPR365.com and PodWeather.com with the latest on the tropics. Taking a look out there today, the only real game in town uh, is our new tropical storm, and this is Tropical Storm Danny, and it's developed right here uh, just crossing 70 west, and it's kind of ragged at this time, expected to continue off to the west, then west-northwest, and then make a turn to the north and northeast but where exactly that turn occurs is critical for an impact on land masses. Our invest we saw yesterday that was in the Caribbean has moved into the Pacific, and you can see it does have a good rotation with it. The long-range GFS actually shows this becoming a uh, hurricane in the eastern Pacific that we'd have to deal with down the road. Well, let's get the latest on Tropical Storm Danny as of 11 a.m. Eastern. It was at 24.9 north, 70.3 west. Winds were 45 miles an hour, gusting to 55. It's moving west-northwest at 18 miles an hour, 1,009 millibars. And it is forecast, as mentioned, to continue that track, then move off to the northwest, then north-northwest, and then the north by Friday, and then begin a turn off to the northeast by Saturday as a hurricane, a Category 1, and then continue just scraping Cape Cod and then making landfall in either Maine or uh, Nova Scotia here as a hurricane that's turning extra tropical. Now the question is if it takes the left edge of this cone it might be over warmer waters, it might impact North Carolina. If it takes the right edge it might not impact land areas at all. Uh, so it's going to be very very critical also the time frame on this. Uh, if it takes the left edge, we could be talking about late Friday, sun, uh, Saturday morning, very early, even making landfall in North Carolina. On the other hand, if it takes the right edge, uh, it could be impacting Canada up here by Sunday night. So there's a big difference between Friday night and Sunday night because of the angle of the coastline that we're going to have to deal with this system. Now, the latest visible satellite imagery, there's the center. You could clearly see it has a low-level circulation in here, but it's very exposed, very weak and disorganized. However, conditions are expected to become a little bit more favorable, especially after 36 hours. So as this system continues, that motion like this is expected to turn more to the north. And the uh, general thinking with it right now, as far as the track is concerned, uh, is that we will have a uh, trough develop, a uh, mid-upper level low develop in the uh, area here of the Gulf Coast as well as a, a trough over the Great Lakes and that this will all help sweep Danny up and out however it's not going to occur until Danny's right in this area here so that's why it's so critical because if it continues to move northwest and any kind of troughiness that comes in to sweep it up is late we could be talking about a landfall here in North Carolina or further up the coast even in South Carolina Georgia until it passes your latitude you guys uh, cannot let your guard down with that whatsoever. Now as far as the uh, model guidance is concerned with it, they're all in general agreement that it's going to continue west-northwest, then make a turn north, and then northeast. But some of the models, you can see the UK Met has it making landfall on Cape Cod. You can see the uh, Canadian model has it making landfall on the Outer Banks and then scraping New Jersey and then coming into New York. Uh, the current motion is uh, directly towards uh, Cape Canaveral. So until we start to see that northward curve, people to the west of these models need to be on the alert for any potential eventualities with this storm. Now the water temperatures with Danny, uh, again, anything that gets into the western gulf this year, if we do have anything, is going to be boiling. But as far as Danny is concerned, it does have very warm waters heading generally towards even warmer water but then the further north it gets it gets quickly cool so we're gonna have to wait on that as far as the wind shear is concerned there's about uh, I'd say 10 to 20 knots of wind shear over it it's gonna be getting in a bit more favorable environment especially as it gets close to the coast with those warm Gulf Stream waters it could indeed become a hurricane before getting swept up to the north and northeast so that's what we're going to have to worry about with Danny. Right now there's nothing else in the tropics. A few computer models were showing that we could get development off Africa, but it hasn't been very consistent on the track or intensity or when that would happen, so we're going to have to wait on that. In the eastern Pacific we have two tropical storms, uh, one in the central Pacific. This is Tropical Storm Hilda here uh, bursting, and this is Tropical Storm Ignacio weakening and both are at 45 miles an hour. Ignacio is expected to continue to weaken and head like that and Hilda is expected to maintain pretty much the same moderate to strong tropical storm intensity as it passes to the south of Hawaii 
and we're not really going to have to deal with either one of these near any land masses uh, anytime soon at least uh, the only way we'd have to deal with them is in the way of high swells. Finally in the western Pacific Typhoon Vamco is way out of here it's uh, totally gone 75 miles an hour it's not going to be a problem anymore but there is this blob here could this be our next system in the western Pacific? We'll wait and see uh, just what happens with that. I'm Mike Naso from IPR365.com. That's the latest on Tropical Storm Danny and Tropical Storms Hilda and Ignacio in the Pacific. I'll see you next time.